The U.S. is one of the world's top polluters. And with COP28 underway, the White House is putting climate change at the center of its agenda, making the largest investments into renewable energy in American history. But the U.S. fragmented electric grid is proving to be an obstacle to reform. Benji Haya reports. The planet's second biggest emitter embracing the winds of change. Last year, a landmark piece of legislation initiated an American revolution in the energy market. The Inflation Reduction Act, or IRA, opens up billions in funding opportunities to advance alternatives to fossil fuels. But there's one crucial thing missing, transmission lines to carry the energy from wind and solar across different states. The US has barely built any major ones since the turn of the millennium. Those that do exist are old and don't feed into the locations most needed to power America's green future. Unless they're built at a much faster pace, roughly 80% of the emissions reductions expected from the IRA might not materialize. I think the problem that we're having right now is that transmission is, is a little bit of a, a political hot potato. As you can imagine, some folks may see transmission as a need just to move renewables. And I think it's important for us to all say that transmission is not a renewable need. It is a, it is a national need. As, as people, we are relying more and more on electricity for whatever it may be, from charging your phone to an EV revolution on, on, on our vehicle side. Progress generally has been made. Renewables today account for more than a fifth of the US's electricity, a significant increase from even a decade ago. And consumer demand for the technology is rocketing. Take cars. 7% of all new registrations are for electric vehicles. However, experts say the charging infrastructure nationwide, or lack thereof, is what's driving away prospective owners. The coasts are, are, are fairly well built out. Right. I, I live in North Carolina. I regularly go down south to Georgia and Florida, up north to D.C., New York uh, and Boston. I have no problem finding charging stations, having my route being planned and meeting those needs. Right. When you start to get into the vast swaths of land that we have, you know, across the Midwest and, and, and further west, right, that it becomes very difficult. To get there, transmission networks will have to expand, but it's expensive and it's hard to get permission from different levels of government. Transforming grid capacity across such a huge landmass, well, that doesn't happen overnight either. Yet the administration insists its actions and subsidies are still having a rapid impact. The energy transition is happening much faster than people predicted. That's good news. It's happening because the cost of renewables is coming down. It's happening because innovation is proceeding apace. When we were in San Francisco and the Bay Area with our Japanese allies, I had the opportunity to spend a day in Silicon Valley uh, visiting an American battery startup called Lighten, which is developing a whole new chemistry for long storage batteries to manage renewable energy. That that kind of story is repeating itself over and over again. Time is of the essence, though. This isn't just about a long-term structural overhaul. President Biden needs his policies and their tangible results to land fast with voters in order for him to stay in office and continue with his climate agenda. Benji Hire, CNA, Washington.